previously, on the nightmare years, journalists Bill and Tess Shirer arrive in Hitler's Berlin to uncover the beginnings of the Nazi madness. This time, the terror hits home. This is not a newspaper article. These are people. Are we going to help After them? After tonight, you'll be able to go out whenever you want. The exclusive television presentation of The Nightmare Years now continues. For months, Tess and I walked a tightrope, trying to get the truth out about Germany without getting tossed out ourselves. Our sources had much worse to fear. At any time, they could be woken from bed, arrested, charged with treason. Some, we would find out, would even be executed. Hitler had grown more and more brazen. He had drafted a half million young Germans into the army, unveiled his new Luftwaffe, and revoked the citizenship of all German Jews. Somehow, our friend Victor Schneider had so far managed to slip through the tightening net. A shameful highlight of Nazi propaganda in those early years were the book burnings. Using the university as a backdrop, Goebbels and his crew would build a giant bonfire of the world's greatest writings on psychology, physics, even science fiction. Anything that threatened the new German way of life. The Ministry of Propaganda made sure most people saw it their way. Der jüdischen Intellektuellen ist vorbei! 
Why don't you listen to the radio? You're crazy to be out here tonight. I have an evening lecture. Anyone who's Jewish is fair game for these animals. For God's sake, get out of here. Yes, yes, you're right. Thank you. Good evening, Herr Professor. Good evening, Herr Meyer. Good evening, Herr Schneider. Like he is? Please. I think you should leave the building very quickly. Why? It's all right, don't worry. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Will you come with us? We need to talk to you just for a few minutes. But I have a lecture at 7 o'clock. Only for a few minutes, and we will bring you back. But somebody could have warned me. Come on. There's no need for that. This is absolutely ridiculous. Just some papers. But what sort of papers? I told you. Legal papers. Look, I'm not a practicing lawyer. I'm a lecturer in law. I teach. I, I don't handle cases. I understand. Absolutely, of course. Please. These book burnings have become a regular ritual since the Nazis came to power three years ago. They are carefully planned and staged to take place outside universities across Germany. Uh, the Ministry of Propaganda claims that 20,000 books are being destroyed tonight. Please, Herr Schneider. Please, go on through. What is this? I don't understand. It's on the table. It's a sales contract. That's right. It's from my pictures. This is a very good price for such decadent paintings. It's a fraction of their value. You would be well advised to accept this offer. After all, a Jew with no job. What are you talking about? Of course I've got a job, Herr Schneider. I don't believe you will be teaching the law much longer. After all, German law should be taught by Germans, not Jews. You are going to need this money. I won't. I won't sign this. I leave you. Think it over. I won't sign it. I don't want to go back anyway. Won't you be glad to see New York? Yeah, of course I will, and it'll be good to get out of Berlin and breathe for a few days. But I know as soon as I go, I'm going to miss something. Uh-huh. And I can't do that Helga Bauer interview now. That took some arm twisting to set up. Puts his arms, both of them. I'll take it. I will do the interview for you. Could be interesting to interview a woman film director. Don't worry about it. Maybe I can get him to print more of my stuff. That would be wonderful. Maybe it is worth it. 
I don't want to go because I don't want to leave you. That's better. That's more like it. I wish you were coming. Oh, don't be silly. It's too expensive. Why do they want you in New York anyhow? What can't they say by cable? Victor! Can I come in? Come in! My, my, what the hell happened? My family, they mustn't see me like this. Uh, Tess? Come on. Come on, you'll be all right. Come on, sit down here. Victor! Make him sit down. We need some. Sit down, come uh, on. Sit down. Come on. Oh, my God, what's happened? Sit down. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, Victor, it'll be all right. We can fix this. Is anything broken? No, I don't think so. Have you have you heard anything from Sarah? No. Thank God. They, they allowed me to send a message to her that I had to go to Munich so that she wouldn't worry about me. Not that they gave a damn about that. Who's they? Who do you think? The Gestapo. 16 hours they had me. Oof. I fought for Germany. I was wounded. What did they want? My pictures. I refused to sign, so they told me that they're going to come and take them anyway. And they're going to smash up my apartment as a warning to others to cooperate. That's what they said. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't. It's all right, Victor, don't. No. I'm sorry. Don't Get out, they said. You and your family. Dirty Jews. Get out, go. Get out of Germany fast. Go east, go to Slovakia. Get, no, get in your get car. Get out of here without a visa. Visas? Do you know, I, visas take weeks, even months. We do have a friend who might be able to help, if you want to think about it, Victor. Her father is the U.S. ambassador. It's worth a try. Yes. Yes? Can I speak to Martha Dodd, please? Well, can I leave a message? Yeah. Would you ask her to call me? It's urgent. Shira. William Shira. Sarah and the children. I must get them out as soon as possible. I'll go and get them. You can stay here. Oh, well, wait. It might be better for them to get out of the building altogether. Just until we can figure something out. Do you have some friends you can go to? Yes, yes, of course I have. You better pack a few things. Stay. I'll go and get them. I'll be right back. Thank you, Tess. You must be careful. You mustn't incriminate yourself. Don't worry about this. I have an American passport. We'll be all right. They're coming. Get into the bedroom. Quick! Yes! Come there! They're coming in! All of you downstairs! Hurry! Sarah, Sarah, hurry up. Come on, kids. Fast, fast. Leave, leave. Judy, where's Petra? Come on. Ernest! Ernest, stay with me. Come on. I Ernst!
I went to New York, secure in the knowledge that Victor and his frightened family had gone to hide with friends, while Tess worked on Martha Dodd, the ambassador's daughter, to finagle them some visas. No one in New York could imagine how precious such a visa could be. I'd forgotten how alive my country was. What optimism crackled in the air. It was good to be home. People won't believe this. But it's true. It's happening. This is not what I said. Look, why didn't you send this sort of copy in dispatches? I couldn't. And listen, it's important that my name isn't on it, understand? Just from a special correspondent. If they knew, I'd written it. Sure. OK. If we use it. Seymour, that's just the damn problem. Hey, 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 now that's enough. Bill, you're a professional, remember? You're coming to dinner at Nick Roosevelt's tonight. Well, you see for yourself what America's interested in. You know why they wanted me to get you back. Tell me. They think they may have to close the Berlin Bureau. That's crazy. Berlin's the biggest story in Europe right now. Well, it costs you a hell of a lot to run, you know. Bill, if I were you, I wouldn't worry so much about what doesn't get printed. I'd think about your job. I mean, I think that what you write is great. <laughs> For what it's worth. So what do they want me to write? Just good human interest, Bill. Not too much politics, OK? Tell me something. Is Universal Services going bust? What? Absolutely not. What makes you suspect a thing like that? All right, all right. We're in the black. Something's going on here. Nothing. Nothing, Bill. So help me. How's Tess? Fine. Fine. That girl's underrated as a reporter. So she tells me. Look, Bill, there's this bit. The future of Europe will be decided in Berlin. Now, isn't that a little bit over the top? Well, hey, here we are. This is it. Marvelous place they got themselves. Yeah. Nick Roosevelt's got a nice place. Wow. Get out of here. Come on down, get a drink. Hello! Nick says you've been living in Berlin. That's right. And you're going back. That's right. Peter and I were in Berlin. You were? Uh, when? Mm, four years ago. I don't remember that. What'd you think? Wonderful city. Absolutely wonderful. Of course, during the daytime, while Harriet was busy shopping the Kudam, I was busy resting for the nightlife. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't keep him out of the nightclubs, as a matter of fact. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter. <laughs> you know, uh, Freddie Holstein used to go to the, uh, what's that, black stocking place in uh, Dustin? I saw him there once. <laughs> Alone. <laughs> his wife wasn't around, was she? Oh, no, no was his part. wife was sleeping. We're going to Berlin next summer for the Olympics. We'll be there as well. We've got all our money on Jesse Owen. Ra, ra, ra. <laughs> Where are you going to stay? We're staying at the Esplanada. In the Kaiser Suite, I hope. You'll have to compete with us for that suite. <laughs> we're going to Cannes first, and then through Aachen to look at some horses. Then we're going to get oh, to Berlin just good. before the Olympic start. I, I thought so. And then I said to her that she shouldn't wear that kind of dress because it doesn't. And it's not something that can just be shrugged off. The Germans have already broken the arms limits imposed by the Versailles Treaty. We have tanks, we have aircraft, sheer number of troops. Hitler's heading straight for war, and he has to have it or his economy will collapse. The British are hiding their heads. Murder is a political weapon. It's a political fact. The Jews are being systematically harassed, and, and the Nazis cook the news so much that America has no idea. They even have a ministry of propaganda and a ministry of culture to tell people what to think. <clears throat> well, we've got problems in this country, too, you know. At least Hitler's not a Bolshevik. They're the danger. I agree. There's nothing we can do about Germany from over here. 
We're not going to march into another war now, are we? Do we want another war? Listen, Bill, do you want to know what the real problem is? My cousin, Franklin D. Roosevelt, in the White House. He's our problem. He's trying to set up a dictatorship in America just like Hitler has over there. That's what we should be concerned about. He's going to lead us all to Bolshevik ruin. You've been in that Nazi cuckoo land too long, son. Newspapers, everyone? Oh. We have all the first edition sent up. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. They've used your story, Bill. Here it is. Page six. I told you, Bill. Our readers aren't that interested. Look at this, Nick. The house has passed the corporate tax. What? And the stock market will follow, I'm afraid. <laughs> will you excuse me? I'm going to take a little walk. Don't hurry back, huh? Moved by his supreme responsibility and deepest love for his people, the Führer has led Germany back to its rightful place among the free nations. The conscription of our brave young men and the construction of a new modern navy and air force form a strong basis for the peace in Europe and throughout the world. Our people have suffered too long under the intolerable conditions of the Versailles Treaty that was dictated by France and England. By the reconstruction of our military force, the Führer has restored the honor of the German people. Let us never forget his precept of the past. Only a strong people are a free people. Mit dem sich das deutsche Volk von undeutschem Geist reinigt. She has cut at least half of my speech. She's here the most difficult. What's happened to the rice minister's speech? I haven't the remotest idea. Where is the rest of it? The rest of what? My speech. It was out of place in the overall scheme. Out of place? information in your speech that is missing. I haven't decided about the commentary yet. I can't do that until I've reached a further stage in the editing. There, that's the whole sequence. But if there's no commentary and no speech, the audience will not understand why the books are being burnt. I think you can leave that to me, Reich Minister. I am a professional. And you work for me, Fräulein. I work for the Führer. Under the administration of this department. Perhaps we might ask Fräulein Bauer to include just a little more of the Reich Minister's speech. I'm trying to make a film about the liberation of German culture and the destruction of Jewish and degenerate art. And you hamper me with your petty little exactly, quibbles about this and... Exactly, that is exactly my point. Well, then please leave me alone so that I can get on with it. By the way, 
I would like a further 10,000 feet of raw stock to finish this film, and I would like it by 12 o'clock tomorrow, please. 10,000 feet? What for? In order to finish the film properly. No, 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 no. You've only had three times more raw stock than anyone else. If you have a problem about this, then of course I will have to ask the Fuhrer. I do not like to trouble him over something so trivial. Fräulein, a deputation from the Anglo-German Fellowship is arriving at Friedrichstrasse Station tomorrow afternoon at four, and I should like you to film the arrival. But that is a news feature. Nevertheless. And I shall be editing tomorrow. Perhaps, uh, perhaps if Fräulein Bauer were to film the arrival of these people as a gesture of goodwill, uh, the Reich Minister might able to find that extra raw stock. Very well. Thank you, Fräulein. Expecting your husband. But he is in the United States. Did you know that, Putsi? Oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. So? So, only me to interview Miss Helga Bauer as we arranged. Oh. No, 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 this is most embarrassing, you know. Fräulein Bauer is very busy at the moment. She rarely gives interviews. This one test. This one was arranged. Specifically for your husband, you know, he was so very <laughs> persuasive. And uh, I don't think Fräulein Bau would allow herself to be photographed. Come on, Putsi. Yes. Hmm? The yes. woman's angle. The what? Why I adore my Führer, told woman to woman. What? Why I adore my Führer. <laughs> So very American. Oh, sure, but you women over American women by the millions. The Fuhrer will see how, how clever you are. I mean, unless uh, you're scared of suggesting it to her. That... Scared? I heard she's quite formidable. Mm. I see what I can do. I'm afraid I have to go out to do some filming. There is, in any case, very little I could help you with. I'm afraid I don't really care for this uh, woman-to-woman approach. Then uh, why did you accept to see him? However, I will tell you that I admire the Fuhrer very much. He's very attractive to women. He's a very good friend of mine, but I'm not his mistress. Unfortunately, I do not know where he buys his clothes. Listen, I am not here to do a fashion spread with the Fuhrer. Then what questions do you wish to ask? Do you mind if I sit down? Thank you. Why do you make these films? Why? Because you are a professional or because you believe totally in what they say? Both. But you actually never joined the Nazi party. I looked it up. You never committed yourself totally to the cause, did you? I do not need to sign a piece of paper to prove my commitment to the Fuhrer. Then how else do you prove it? My work. My films. Yeah, but your films promote a political ideal. Hitler. Fascism, Nazism. I mean, being an artist doesn't exonerate you from the results, does it? If the results mean a revitalized Germany... I'm not talking about those results. I'm talking about people being beaten up in the street because they overlook saluting the swastika. The bullying of Jews. Oh, the Jews, the Jews. If they don't like it, then they can get out. May I quote you on that? 
You cannot seriously blame my films for someone being beaten up in the street. I blame the regime. And your films celebrate that regime. They support it, they encourage it. I thought this was to be woman to woman about the Fuhrer. I'm sorry. Perhaps you don't care to talk about these things? Mrs. Shira. My films are a celebration of life. Can you understand that? Of life as it is now. You must not see them as political. I can't believe you mean that. I have to leave now to do some filming at Friedrichstrasse Station. Perhaps you'd care to join me? Sure, why not? It's just a little news item, but it might interest you. Mm. You could even take some photographs. Mm -hmm. Come along then, there's a car waiting. you say they are? Uh, the old one is Lord Stanwood, chairman of something. The other one is Major Radford. Vice Minister Dr. Goebbels is most anxious to meet you. Please follow me. Rapid's a good man, a strong man. Stan was weaker, though. Well, they don't know anything. Nothing at all. They're just babes in arms. No, no, no. They'll put you on the next train. Out of here. Keep your voice down. Be cool. Yeah. There will be no more disturbances. That quite clearly understood. Yeah. Lord Stenwood, it is my most pleasant duty to welcome you and the members of the Anglo-German Fellowship to Berlin. It is so important that the close bonds between our two countries be strengthened during these times of widespread misunderstanding. Bravo. <laughs> All right, Minister. We thank you for the warmth of your welcome. The purpose of our visit is fact-finding, to see the many great achievements of Nazi Germany with our own eyes. Absolutely, no fooling us. So we may spread the word as widely as possible in the British Isles. Here, here, tell everybody, good old Adolf. For God's sake, shut up. <laughs> Putsi, can we talk to him? Yeah. Of course, of course, at tomorrow's press conference. Oh, no, 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 you be here, let me and talk to him. Oh, sir, sir, can we speak? Good afternoon, gentlemen and ladies. You have a question for me? Uh, yes, and Major Radford, if we can, sir. Of course, delighted. Can you tell us what the president... Don't let him fool you! They'll try to pull the wool over your eyes like they pulled it over ours. And don't accept this propaganda bullets without checking the facts. It's shameful what's happening here. What will happen to them? Oh, he'll be sent home to bed. 
His head tomorrow shall be sufficient punishment. <laughs> I should like to make sure of seeing him again. God was unnecessarily rough, I thought. Thank you. <laughs> Deutschland. Das ist das Land der unermüdlichen Arbeiter. Germany is a country of hard, dedicated workers. It is a country of farmers who struggle with nature for the reward of their labor. It is a country of the workers who fight the battle for Germany's future in the factories and in the mines and in the rolling mills and blast furnaces. The German works not for reward, but for the work itself and for the rebirth of the German nation. Nowhere in the world is the idea that labor brings honor and dignity more deeply planted than in the German soul. Shoulder to shoulder with his people, the hardest worker of all, Adolf Hitler, dedicates his strength into rebuilding our glorious place in history. After the dark years of shame and poverty, our people are clothed and fed and given security in their future. The world, which held out no hand to help us in our hour of weakness, now sees us restored to our rightful destiny of strength and pride under our Führer, Adolf Hitler. The Deutsche Volk is glücklich in the Bewusstsein, dass the ewige Fluch der Feinungen nun endgültig abgelöst wurde von einem ruhenden Ohl. On the ship and coming back to Berlin, I had been thinking that hell, maybe Bergson was right. Maybe I had been in this cuckoo land too long. Five minutes back and I knew he was wrong. You could feel the menace in the air. Aren't you gonna say welcome home? They don't make you stay out all night, do they? That's terrible. Can't your union do anything about it? I'm so glad you're back. Mm, me? You can't imagine what things have been like. I haven't slept for three nights. What's the matter? The Schneiders went to stay with friends, you remember? Yeah. Well, they are back. Back? Back where? There. There? Come in. Sarah. Victor. So, no visas, huh? I am so sorry. Martha is so unhappy. The ambassador tried, but he couldn't do anything. Does Martha know they're here? No. Nobody knows. Good. Ernst, how's my old pal? We can't do anything. I know something you can do. Go into the living room and bring me my briefcase. It's on the floor. Petra. Bill, you know we stay for three weeks with my colleague from the university. But his wife was very frightened. We had to go. Slept in the park one night and... And then a few days ago, we had no place else to come but here. And Tess took us in. You know, I, I, I'm glad you're here. 
There you are. Find it? Yes. Look, it's not much, but will you give this out? It's just, uh, well, do you like chocolate? Yes. Now, you should be by yourself. You've been away a long time. Tess has missed you. Well, all right. All right, we'll say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, you. Thank you. Good night. The Gestapo came looking for them after they left the house. I had to lie and pretend they knew nothing. And this agent's still outside. Now they are so frightened of being picked up on the street. They won't go out the door. Well, we'll just have to... I'm sorry for the homecoming. This is where we sleep. <sighs> it's not gonna be easy to work. What's more important, your damn work or those people out there? Don't say my damn work. It's possible my damn work could help people. But this is not a newspaper article. These are people. Are we going to help them? Yes, Tess, of course. What do you think? Oh, I'm so, I'm so nervous. What are we fighting about? All I said was... Come in. Excuse me. Sure, Ernst, come on through. So how was New York? Oh, terrible. Um, can we talk about it in the morning? Oh. Nice bed. <laughs> we'll figure everything out in the morning. Good night. Sleep well. Good night. Close the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you're back. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Me too. You like my bed, huh? I like your bed. <laughs> one visa. Just one family visa. The embassy gets four a month. Open visas to be used at your discretion. Used to. We used to. They've been stopped? They were stopped six weeks ago. They're tightening the screws. If I don't stop criticizing this regime, all sorts of privileges are going to disappear. I just found out now they're probably going to shut down the embassy clinic. We'll all have to go to the public hospital. Well, can they do that? Look, they can do anything they damn well want, as long as Washington is not prepared to stand up to them. And so far, they are not. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. Who are these visas for? Some friends of the Shiras, a university lecturer and family. Jewish. Of course they're Jewish, and they're very... Don't tell me any more of the details. The United States Embassy has had the use of that clinic for 16 years. By courtesy of the German government. Yeah, and now you give us a one week's notice for foreclosure. Now, for what reason? That is a question for the Ministry of Public Health. No, I don't think so, right, Minister. There's no other embassy has had to close. So why do you pick on us? You know of no reason. I want to hear you say it. Administrative difficulties. Although the inconvenience will be far less now that the number of officers on your staff is to be reduced, isn't that so? What officers? Those engaged in activities that uh, do not seem very necessary to us. There's not a man in my embassy who is not essential. By your standards? Well, of course by my standards. I'm the damned ambassador. Your Department of Information seems a little overweight. Perhaps if your staff spent less time denigrating this country and feeding information to American journalists... They do not denigrate the regime. At least not publicly, any more than I do. Nevertheless. However, I do draw your attention to the abuses of, of human rights. 
that are going on right here. Human rights. The persecution of the Jews. Oh, yeah, you've heard it all before. Why is it that no one wants to talk about anything but the Jews? Because we are greatly concerned. You will receive official notice of the reduction of your staff, Ambassador. You can discuss it then. But if I stop criticizing the regime, you may let them stay, is that it? You've got to listen to this. When I go back to Washington, myself, I intend to speak to the press. Now, people, people should know what's going on here in Germany. At the end of your ambassadorship, you mean? Yeah, it's probably very close. I know what you've been saying to Washington. That's why I'm telling you this. I'll resign from the diplomatic service first, and then, by God, I'm going to tell the American people what's going on here. Despite the natural anger of the German people that would result against Americans still living here? You know how many there are, I suppose. About 11,000. Some of the outrage felt by decent, patriotic Germans would be difficult to contain. I want you to think about that, Ambassador. The one thing that the Fuhrer abhors, above all, is violence. Junge Männer des Reiches, young men of the Reich. Your Führer offers you the tanks, the artillery, all the tools to rebuild the fatherland, to reassert the noble might of the German people. Yes, Reich Minister. This order relating to the expulsion of William Shira. Yes, Reich Minister. He's not Jewish, is he? No, oh, absolutely not. Then I've decided to cancel it. His American articles are not influential. He is more used to us here. People believe in his integrity. That could be useful. Ah, indeed. Now, what is the position with Norman Ebbett? He has had two private meetings with the, uh, with the um, Anglo-German Fellowship. Where were these meetings? In order. Do we know what was said? Unfortunately, no. Oh, but we can guess, huh? Diese Flamme gibt der schöpferischen Kunst moderner politischer Propaganda allein Licht und Wärme. Diese Kunst wächst aus den Tiefen eines Volkes hervor, weil ihre Kraft im Volke wohnt. Macht, gestützt auf Gewehre, kann eine ausgezeichnete Sache sein. Aber Macht, gegründet auf die Herzen eines Volkes, ist ein weit, weit größeres Gut. Fünf Minuten. Fünf Minuten Pause. Mr. Shira, Frauenbauer has five minutes for you now. Mr. Shira. I love very few people to watch me working. Why is that? It gets misreported. I don't misreport. I know. How do you know? I read through your file at the Ministry of Propaganda. You did? What's in it? Oh, a lot. It's very thick. <laughs> Coffee? Sure. There are some of your articles and uh, also some reports and comments about you. They say you are very troublesome. <laughs> but honest. Well, that's true. How thick is it? Uh, very. It makes you very difficult, you see, for Goebbels to handle. He prefers journalists who uh, he can, well, how shall we put it, influence. You're very frank. I think I can trust you. But this whole operation is about influencing people, isn't it? I mean, what's the Ministry of Propaganda for? And these films of yours, these phony films. 
What do you mean phony? Well, just for instance, and it's not a big thing, but that speech, the speech you've just been filming? Yes. In the studio. And you're going to put it in one of your documentaries just as if it were a real speech. You obviously don't understand the medium, Mr. Shira. What matters is the finished film. Facts are facts, aren't they? You can't fabricate news. I'm not filming news. But you make it look like news. I'm filming what's happening to Germany. There is a new and wonderful spirit here under the greatest political genius Europe has known this century. Okay, Miss Bauer. Let me ask you this. Don't you think these constant images of the strong dominating the weak and this whole promotion of the idea of superior race is just an invitation for bullies to persecute whoever they can? I see that you only choose to view all our recent achievements in a cynical and destructive light. Perhaps you should just deal with journalistic dirt. You just want dirt, is that it? You just want gossip like the other journalists? What are you saying? You want a list of all the actresses that Goebbels has slept with. Uh, what? That little man is the biggest lover since Casanova. You didn't know that? The Ministry of Propaganda is the biggest casting couch in history. Is this what you want to hear? Bad egg. Sehr gut. An die Arbeit. Wir fangen wieder an. Oh, Mr. Shara. I want you to come to the premiere of my new film. Perhaps you can learn something. I'd be delighted, thank you. I will send you a ticket. Sind wir fertig? Go and hide yourself. I've been trying this? to get a message to this you. Crap they've been Sarah, writing. it's Bill. Scandalous lies of subversive Englishmen. Alphonse sends us all the papers. He thinks we should all take it up together, all foreign journalists. Demented ravings of Jew love. This is ridiculous. I mean, the Times wouldn't print his copy. No, but they don't mention that here, do they? Englishman Norman Ebbett puts filth on entire German nation. It's outrageous. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Hold on, wait a moment. You had a phone call from the ministry. From Hamstangle. Goebbels' office. They said they didn't like your articles, the ones you got in America. They hoped you would learn by this example. Is that right? I'm sorry, Hashara. You can't come in it's here. Mr. Nice Shira, I am crap? sorry. No, no need to shout, Mr. Shira. Do please come in. It's all right, Margaret. It's all right. Listen, I'll to see Mr. Shira. German hater Norman Ebbett admits he makes up lies about the Jews in order to sabotage the Olympic Games. Now, just one moment. He is a liar and a cheat. And he will not escape punishment. All true. We have copies of all his dispatches. Not true. And most of his stuff was never even printed. It's good they will not print it because they were not true. So what the hell is everybody getting so excited about? It might be a warning, Mr. Shira. You slipped off to New York to write slanters about Germany. But we have all that you wrote. All right, show me something. Show me one lie in what I wrote. You think you can use Norman to scare me out of writing about what I see with my own eyes? You put those slanders in, you can take them out. Norman Abbott deserves a full retraction and an apology. You are fighting a losing battle, Mr. Shira. If Norman Abbott's newspaper cared half as much about him as you do, they would still be using his copy. Do you know why his editor would not print his lies? Suppose you tell me. Because the London Times knows that Bolshevik Russia is a much greater threat than Germany. If our two countries fight, we would both be fatally wounded, and then Russian communism would overrun us all. I'm a reporter, not a politician. Oh, but come along, Shira. You are much too intelligent not to see that. 
That is precisely why the Anglo-German Fellowship is in Berlin at present, is it not? I believe you saw Fräulein Helge Bauer this morning. Yes. I can give you plenty of things worth writing about without harming Germany. Like what, for example? A list of Miss Bauer's lovers. She has, at some time, had affairs with her present cameraman, leading actor, Deputy producer, financier, bank manager. There are the details. No, thanks. That's not my line of work. <clears throat> A serious, responsible journalist. Yes, good. Yeah. I write what I personally know to be true. But that, Mr. Shiva, is just what you journalists are not doing. You are not reporting the facts. You are interpreting them. And only history can do that. We are reporting the facts. You just don't like the truth when you read it. Truth. The truth is that we were a desperate people, starving before the eyes of the world which did nothing. And then one man tore us, pulled us from despair. And Germany lives today because of him. You know what you overlook, Shira? Our pure dedication and sincerity. No, I don't. That's the most frightening thing of all. Frightening? Yes, the power of resurrection can be frightening. But it can be beautiful. In the end, that will justify everything. At this point, we can only speculate as to what the move might be, but the phrase being bandied about today is Lebensraum, which is roughly translated as right space for living. Yeah, space for living. Harry, you can draw your own conclusions yeah. as to what that means. Ha. Huh. Indication one oh, that the three nine oh. Speaking of which, who's winning the game? Five one? Are you kidding me? I'm going to lose my whole salary this week. Elsewhere, Hitler is giving delirious receptions wherever he goes. The Times is suspended, me. Did you know that? I don't. I'm sorry, Norman. They won't say why. But don't worry. They'll send the first class ships to replace me. Someone like Peter Butler, that's who they'll send. Hey, Norman, take it easy. That's coming tonight. Later. No more of that, huh? <laughs> Go away, Abbott. Hmm? Go away! <laughs> Good shot. Very gold has been! Sit down, Stop brother. Now. Okay, Norman. Don't come whining to us just because your papers cut you off. Maybe you've got something to tell us. How about an interview? I've been granted an interview with Adolf Hitler. Yeah. You've all applied to interview the Fuhrer. You've all been turned down. What a bunch of hypocrites. Only Nazi lovers get an interview with the Fuhrer. Real Nazi ass kissers. I admire what's going on. There's ugliness, but it's necessary. You're all too damn soft to admit it. Oh, come off it, Peter. What about Shira? What about Shira? He's going to interview Goering. No, I'm not. I'm not going to interview him. <clears throat> I'd like to do that. But my employers have asked me, have ordered me, to get him to do some articles for them. It certainly wasn't my idea. You see? We both work for Hearst. Hearst has Hitler. Hearst has Goering. Now, you make me sick.
Ministry of Propaganda. By order of the minister, the press credentials of correspondent Norman Ebert are hereby revoked. Oh, they can't see that. For eight years, he... Unless order is restored, this conference will be abandoned. Bullshit. What a gal. For eight years, he, that is, Norman Ebert, has transmitted lies oh, about Germany, which have become intolerable. Even the Times newspaper has refused to print many of his German-hating treacheries. Not true. Germany's tolerance of their opinion cannot extend to spies and saboteurs. The goodwill of the German people is not served by scheming liars who come as guests of national socialism, but who but whose intention is nothing less than sabotage as their historic destiny. Did you ever doubt their sincerity? No, but I mean, to say that it justifies everything, lies, persecution, violence. Shire. What? Change the subject. I love you. What? Say it again. Do you know who that is? No. Ambassador Dodd. I'm sorry to just arrive at your doorstep. Oh, come in. Are you sure it's all right? Sure. Uh, Hello, Ambassador. Hello, Why Jess. don't you come in? Yeah. I was just saying goodbye to some friends over in the next block. So I thought I'd come in and say the same to you. Are you really going, sir? Mm -hmm. Next few days. It's all very quick. State Department wanted me to hang on for the next damn fool Nuremberg rally. Cheer on the Fuhrer. They never want to rock the boat when it comes to these thugs. Well, I'm damned if I'm going to let America look that stupid. Now, you quote me on that. You better wait till I leave Berlin. Thank you, sir. Mark, will we uh, staying on for a little while? You get our Washington address from her, will you? God, we shall miss you. You're a brave pair. Sure. You got that quote now. Let me say it again. If it makes any difference, I think you're being treated shamefully. Where's the State Department's gut? Hmm. Maybe they're doing me a favor. I loved it here at first. Now it's all got ugly. But you keep up the good work. best people in Germany were being driven out. Dodd was the kind of ambassador who refused to get sucked in. He never forgot what he came to represent or what he came to fight. Norman Ebbett was the same kind of reporter. No wonder the Nazis were confident. Whenever someone told the truth, Goebbels and his crew shoved them aside and got away with it. March 7, 1936, the German army marched into the Rhineland without a shot being fired. It was a brazen violation of the treaty ending World War I. But France never budged. The politicians in England refused to let it interrupt their weekend. We learned later that Hitler's generals were under strict orders. If challenged by the French, 
they were to beat a hasty retreat. At Paris? Yeah. They mobilize them? The French had it in their power to humiliate Hitler, to make him the laughing stock of his own country. Instead, they let him change the military balance in Europe. From that day forward, Europe knew that Hitler had the stomach for battle. France and Great Britain did not. Yes? Everything all right? Yes. So I'm leaving. Don't forget to turn off your light. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Go get the cap. It's nice to have policemen at the door. It's enough. It's bed done. You wash your face. Please can I play? I'm nearly winning. Yes, but tomorrow you can win. We'll finish tomorrow. I won't touch anything, I promise. All right. That's a good boy. And be very quiet, Paul. Okay. I ordered. I hope that's okay. Thank you. How are the Schneiders? Sitting in the dark. Look. How about you? I'm fine. I'm tired. Busy day. This came for you from Paris. Look who I sent it. Hmm. This is from Victor. It says the weather in Paris is very fine. That's dandy, isn't it? The Gestapo reads our mail on a cylinder stone, don't you think? But from Paris? I sent it to myself. I sent it to the Paris office to send back to me. Did you? Pretty clever, huh? It's time to get washed. Now. Do it on my Go on, I'll show you another time. Mm. Go on.
Martha. Martha, how are you, sweetie? Hi. Any luck? Do you know what those rats at the foreign ministry are saying now? That the Schneiders are in Paris, so they don't need visas after all. Don't you believe it, Martha? Oh, aren't they just first-class bastards? They take away their citizenship and then refuse to grant them visas so they can get out. Yeah, I know, I know. And now they can be arrested any time and even sent to a concentration camp. You must be way over the treaty level. I haven't counted recently. How many will you have next year? Ask me next year. Sit down, Mr. Shira. Make yourself comfortable. So, how much have you got in the bank? Reporters don't get rich. Ha, well, occasionally life is unfair. You say that your boss, Mr. Hurst, wants me to write a column in your newspaper. Yes, sir. I am to be the guest columnist, eh? <laughs> to balance the German haters like you. That's a joke. I have no sense of humor. I notice that in America, Mr. Hurst also has Mr. Winston Churchill. Mind, I shall tell the troops. I believe he also employs uh, Miss Luella Parsons. Goebbels is a great fan of hers. Are you? I make it a habit not to read any of Mr. Hurst's columnists. The reporters are such snobs. No wonder you don't get rich. I write that column for you, William, once we have agreed the fee. Mr. Hurst is a millionaire, isn't he? General Goering, do you mind if I... $2,000 the first article, one a month minimum. Oh, that's for the first one. Then $3,000 an article after that, and then $4,000, etc., etc., etc. Very good value. Hmm? All right, sir, I'll, I'll wire New York. Now, General Gur... Ah, my friends call me Herman. What with all of this rearmament, sir, what would you say is Germany's aim? I thought you were here to negotiate, no? Right. Always a reporter. One people, one Reich, one Führer. One people. Provided that there are no Jews. Oh, I won't say that in my column. I'll leave you something to say, eh? I want to show you something. You get paid in dollars, don't you? Yes, dollars. Uh, very glad to hear it. I need foreign exchange. Oh, uh, well, it's only one more flight now. You enjoy paintings? Where did you get these? Oh, a very dear aunt, a most artistic lady. Her name was Gretel. Yes, one of my favorites. The great big lions. Uh, Manet. A solid investment. I can also offer Cezanne, Van Gogh, Matisse, and Picasso. And a selection of old masters. You will mention that to Mr. Hurst, won't you? I believe he has a very large house, many walls, etc. I thought for a minute you expected me to buy them. Of course, you can buy if you wish. But I do want foreign exchange. I do know a collector who might be interested. But he's leaving Germany and there's been some red tape. What does he want and what does he pay? This. And five exit visas. Uh huh. Five thousand dollars. Done. Victor? I've got a two. Never mind. Can you get your hands on 5,000 American dollars? No. Dollars? I have no dollars. Hell. Why do you ask? For visas. Wait. 
Feces, yeah. He says he couldn't get his feces from us. I think we must use it now, sir. They have gold. You have gold? Yeah. Yeah, sir, I insisted that we do this. Tag, Herr Schanger. Kommen Sie bitte mit uns. Kommen Sie bitte mit uns. Hören Sie Nein. mich. Los, einsteigen. Was ist los? So, schau mir. Los, Rand, los. Mr. Scheiber, we are aware of your relationship with the Schneider family. Are you? I am giving you a last opportunity to tell me the whereabouts of Victor Schneider. I don't know anything to say. He visited you, yeah? After his arrest? That's not against the law. He wrote to you! From Paris. How do you know that? We open your letters. You intervened on his behalf as a foreign ministry on a matter of visas. I like the guy. Because he's a traitor to his country who feeds you lies to sell to the American press. Who knows why you like someone? Some people you just like, others you think are first-class shit. Perhaps you do not realize how serious your position is. Fräulein Gänse! This briefcase, you are aware of what it contains? Fräulein Gänse, we'll be recording this conversation. We have very strict currency laws, Mr. Shira. The penalties begin at ten years hard labor. You better ask her to leave the room for a minute. This is not possible. That gold belongs to General Goering personally. Hold on, Gansa. Would you leave the room for a moment, please? Ask for uh, 6714. That's his private line. Sixty-seven fourteen, please. Well, good afternoon, Sturman Frau Miller, Gestapo de Department Two. Who is that speaking? Oh, well, I have a Mr. Shira here who has a, forgive me, a gold bar. He says below. Oh, yes, they're right, Minister. I understand perfectly, sir. Oh, no. I won't use this number again. Hi, Lynn. Can we go now? kicked out. He's leaving Berlin tomorrow in the morning. Oh. We're all going down to see him off. All of us. Tess will get your tickets. You'll be on the same train. Oh, good, yes. At the Gestapo at the station, check everyone. There'll be a lot going on. Good. <laughs> Ernst, what's the matter? You can leave now. How can we leave if we can't go outside? After tonight, you'll be able to go out whenever you want. And make a noise? Make as much noise as you like. 
These will get you across the border. Now all we have to do is get you out of Berlin. Yeah? Um, I've had a telegram. About two hours ago, Universal Services folded. Well, thanks for letting me know. Uh, since we both work for Hearst, I've been asked to take you into my bureau. I'd be working for you. That's right. Now, there's just one thing. Um, about that protest meeting tomorrow. Protest? Yeah, about Norman Ebbett. You mean seeing him off at the station? Yeah, that's right. I don't want you to go. It'll be provocative to our German hosts. That's an order. An order? I mean it, Bill. I mean, above all, you're a professional. Hello. Where's Norman? He's somewhere in this carriage. He doesn't know we're here yet. Good. Which compartment? Hey, uh, your Gestapo's taking our names, guys. Peter Butler's here with the British. Gentlemen, it was a great pleasure to have you here to exchange views. Lord Stenwood, it is difficult to describe the honor that you have done us by your visit. I hope that on your return to Great Britain, you will be prepared to reject the slander that some sections of the press seek to heap upon new Germany. Uh, Herr Reich Minister, we've seen and heard many things of great interest while we were your guests. This is an inspiring country. Momentous things are happening here. Norman. 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 And I was always taught as a child never to express anything but gratitude to one's host. And indeed, there, there is so much to admire in this extraordinary country of yours. So much. There are, however, a few matters that have come to my attention that cause perhaps a slight concern. I am told that your Jewish citizens must at times face a certain intolerance. And in some cases, this appears to have developed into outright. You give me so many messages to deliver, I can't remember them all. That's ridiculous. Let's go, Jack. Let's go, Jack. Let's go, Jack. let sind das Ihre Freunde? Sie reisen nicht mit ihm? Sind Sie in Besitz gültiger Papiere? Dann möchte ich die Papiere sehen. Mr. Shira, there's to be no drinking. Los, los, los. Kommen Sie raus. Kommen Sie raus. Banker. Ihre Papiere. Banker. Hier.
working for Peter Butler had its drawbacks, but at least we were still working at the center of the big story. The Germans were basking in prosperity. They were building their colossal military machine. But to the outside world, they showed a peaceful, smiling front. The battery of propaganda never let up. One of the most effective weapons was radio, brought to us all and everywhere, courtesy of the Ministry of Propaganda. They couldn't wait till we were finished. Who believes this? I mean, all right, some of it's true, but I hate to see people treated like this. Aren't they tired of it? All due to the Führer. Stop thinking of the Führer. Think of something nice. I can't. I can't think of anything nice. I can. Even in the middle of this evil place? Even in the middle of this evil place. I challenge you. One nice thing. Don't drink so much. Don't tell me what to do. One nice thing. Life. A life. What? A baby. Going to have a baby. A baby? A baby? A baby? Be quiet! A baby! Can you be quiet? Baby! A baby! Can be quiet? I apologize, I'm being too loud. Yes, this is wonderful. This is nice. Hey, we can't hear the speech. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. It's a stupid speech, but... Um... Hey, listen to the speech. Yes, this is wonderful. Apologize! I said I'm sorry. That is not enough. So respect go away. Please. We're trying to have a good time. Take the stupid speech. Oh. <laughs> He was bawling in public, assaulting a German citizen, insulting the Führer. Shira? Yes, Shira. Always lands a good punch. Yeah. He has been a troublemaker ever since his arrival. At the Nuremberg rally, hmm? And many times since. The other American correspondents would not behave the way they do if they were not in his company. Do you know, I like him. You like him? He's an honest man. Nowadays, I so rarely get the chance to speak to one. Perhaps you are spending too much time with these people. So, Wilfred, what do you want me to do? Expel him? Well, there is probably enough evidence to do so in his reports, but that would antagonize the other correspondents whose goodwill we need. Exactly. So? There is, of course, another way. There's one person in Berlin who hates him even more than we do. You're a public nuisance. Look, Peter, I had a few drinks, but this man was incredible. And Tess is having a baby. A reporter, for God's sake. We're famous for getting drunk. I've seen you in your cups from time to time, my friend. I don't insult the leader of our host country. Host country? We have German clients. We have a carefully built up relationship with the German Ministry of Propaganda. We must not offend them. So what are you going to do about it? Fire me? Yeah. All right. All right, you go right ahead. All right, now, Bill, I... I never wanted to work for you, you know. No, that's right. Your bureau went bust and you were transferred to mine. That's right. Nobody asked me. Where's your professionalism? The one thing a reporter must not do is to get politically involved. Politically involved? I thought I was being fired for getting drunk. Now, look. Look, let's just sit down. Let's sit down. Come on. Sit. Sit! Quietly, sensibly, and talk this out. Right. It's a very simple solution to this. All you have to do is to write a letter that I can take to the Ministry of Propaganda. Just say that you didn't mean to insult the honor of the German state. Why don't you go screw yourself? 
New York will advise you of your dismissal by telegram. on the next Nightmare Years. I know what the rules are. This is where we break them. The Fuhrer has a special assignment for you. Hmm? For old times' sake. They have uh, to drop you behind the red lines without a parachute. Your family records have been checked. You might think about moving old wife uh, to another hospital. Please stop! Where is my wife? The Nightmare Years continues. <laughs>